Oh, hi there. I was just putting together a puzzle. Whenever I put a, together a puzzle, I think of Earth's crust because it's really like a puzzle with much larger pieces. So for the activity I'm going to share with you today, it is all about geology. And we know that geo means Earth, so it's all about the Earth. This falls under the thread of Earth and space systems and aligns with 2018 revised SOL 5.8 that the student will investigate and understand that Earth constantly changes. We'll focus on the key ideas A and B, that Earth's internal energy causes movement of material within the Earth, and that plate tectonics describe movement of the crust. From the VDOE curriculum framework, you can see that under essential knowledge and skills, in order to meet this standard, it is expected that the student will model the movements of plates at tectonic boundaries, so divergent, convergent, and transform, explain how the movement of tectonic plates relates to the changing surface of Earth, and describe the benefits and limitations of the models, since they are models created. And this activity aligns so well with this essential knowledge and skills bullet point. So of course the students are going to need some background knowledge for this activity. At this point, we have covered the layers of the earth and we always love creating uh, representations of the layers of the earth using Play-Doh. So they make a circular model, um, adding more and more co um, colors of Play-Doh until they have the four different colors for the inner core, outer core, mantle and crust. And then we cut it in half so they can see a cross section um, of a model of the layers of the earth. And they make a little key for what each color represents sense. So the kids understand the layers of the earth. They know that temperature and pressure increase as you go deeper toward the center of the earth. They have learned about Pangea and we have a great Pangea puzzle that we use. So they can see that there's fossil evidence on different continents that supports that. And they've learned about Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift, that plates are gradually constantly moving over time. So then it's time to really zoom in on the plates. And I always tell the kids, we're not focusing on the plates that you eat dinner on. These plates are much bigger. They are huge sections of the Earth's crust. So the Earth's crust is made up of about 20 continent-sized pieces called plates. The Earth's heat energy or thermal energy causes movement of material magma within the Earth. So we're talking about specifically in this lesson, magma from the mantle. This movement causes the plates to constantly move and bump into each other. And again, this is a gradual process taking place over time. Here is a major tectonic plates map that I found um, that I borrowed from Britannica Kids. And I liked it because it shows the direction of plate movement. So you can see that some are going toward each other, um, colliding, some are diverging, they're going away from each other, and some are sliding past each other. Those plates are constantly gradually in motion. So there are three types of plate boundaries that I just alluded to. Plates can move together, convergent boundaries. Plates can move apart, divergent boundaries. And plates can slip past each other, sliding boundaries. And this is all, these slides are for the most part from the JLab um, teacher share PowerPoint that they give to teachers in the program. So I highly recommend JSAT 5 to all the fifth grade teachers out there. And now continuing on, when I teach this vocabulary to the students um, to help clarify the meanings of each of these vocabulary words, because they can be a bit overwhelming, I teach them that convergent plates collide, divergent plates divide, and transform plates slide. One of my coworkers found a great YouTube um, song that covers these plate boundaries, and the kids always love dancing and doing the motions, because even if they don't like to dance, they'll do the motions that convergent plates collide, divergent plates divide, and transform plates slide. So here are my safety tips, wear safety goggles. Um, so that is really optional. I have a, a kit of safety goggles and the kids love to use those whenever they can. So that's more for fun than anything else. Uh, of course, I guess they could get icing in their eye. Keep all materials on the surface. So we're dealing with edible materials and we wanna keep them on the surface to avoid a mess. It can get a little messy with the icing. Do not eat any materials needed for this demonstration. Now it's up to you when it's all done, if you're gonna let your students eat the materials or not. Um, always follow your school's health protocols. Um, so do what's best for your class. And then kids are gonna to wanna to, want to wash their hands after this activity because they are messing with that icing. 
So this lesson is edible plate tectonics. So you're going to need some edible things. Um, you're going to need frosting and graham crackers. That makes the edible plate tectonics and then some other things as well. So you'll need wax paper. I always give um, each kid their own piece on their desk to protect their desk from the frosting. Um, you're going to need a plastic knife, but I actually don't use a plastic knife. I give the kids popsicle sticks, works just as well. And to me seems a little bit safer. Um, and then you're also going to need some water to wet the edges of, I got myself quite a bit here, <laughs> more than necessary to wet the edges of the graham crackers when you get to convergent plate boundaries. So once you have your materials, you are ready to go. And I'm gonna flip back and forth to my document camera so you can see the handout that is linked in your folder for tonight. Um, I just screenshotted from that and then the activity as I walk through it. So you're gonna start with spreading the frosting on wax paper to cover an area larger than a graham cracker. So I usually give them a big old spoonful um, of icing and then they use their popsicle stick to spread it around. So let me switch over my document camera. This may even be a bit too much. There we go. So I'm spreading that icing around to a surface area that's greater than a graham cracker because the graham crackers are going to need to slide around on this. Let me zoom out just a tad there. And ask the kids as they're spreading this out what this could represent. So they've learned about the layers of the earth and we know we're talking about plate tectonics of the earth's crust. So what could be under those plates? All right, I think it is successfully spread. So now I'm gonna hop back over to the PowerPoint to continue walking you through that handout. So then you're gonna break that one graham cracker. The kids are gonna break that one graham cracker in half so that they have those two. Each one is representing one plate. So there's these two rectangles and I'm gonna put them touching on top of the icing. So let me switch over to the document camera for that. So here they are, they're touching on the icing. So at this point, I would ask the kids, thinking of the layers of the earth, and these are plates, what layer of the earth is um, represented by these plates? And they're going to say, oh, okay, we've learned about the plates of the earth's crust. So these are obviously not actually plates of the earth's crust. They're graham crackers, but they are representing two plates of the earth's crust. And we know that those plates are constantly in motion. So then ask them what the icing represents. What is kind of helping those plates to move around? And that's going to be the magma in the mantle. So let me switch back over to the PowerPoint. That would answer those first two questions on the handout. And then here's where the fun begins. We get to create those boundaries. So we're gonna pull the plates apart, those graham crackers apart to expose some frosting. And when those plates move apart, the kids are gonna see that it creates cracks in the earth called a rift valley. Pulling those plates allows the hot melted rock to come up through the crack in the earth. And this is how a volcano's opening is formed. I also teach the kids that this is how the mid-ocean ridge is formed because those plates are diverging. And then that, um, that hot melted rock is coming up and it's cooling and we get the mid-ocean ridge. But let me switch back over to the document camera. All right, so here are those plates together and they're diverging, they're dividing. And so this hot magma can come up there and it's of course gonna cool. All right, so divergent plates divide. Now I'm gonna switch back over to that PowerPoint. We have successfully represented divergent plates dividing. It is called a divergent boundary. Then we're gonna put those two plates back together and we're gonna slide the edges of the crackers, the graham crackers past each other. So slide those plates. This type of boundary, of course, is called a transform boundary, and it can cause a fault, which is a crack in the crust, to be created. The San Andreas Fault in California is a type of this. So here we go. You can feel them catching on each other as you're sliding. You can't quite hear it, but I can hear it really well as they're sliding past each other. All right. So we can see that some of the graham cracker did. There we go. Kind of crack off there as they were glitching. They were catching on each other, sliding past. And that is in fact a transform slide plate boundary. Now we get to the part where we need the water. So I'm gonna wet the edges of the crackers that are facing each other. And I'm actually um, gonna do this and then switch to the document camera. So I have wet the edges that are facing each other. And this is why you wash your hands when you're all done. I'm getting 
little icing on those fingers. Okay, and I'm going to push down and pull them together. And so I kind of get, um, you can see there's this formation of something new. So let me switch back. So this is of course a convergent plate boundary and you could see there was this formation of something new. When the plates collide, mountains are formed such as the Appalachian Range in North America. I have a picture for you on this slide. But also if you wanna show the kids, um, subduction is when one plate is gonna go under the other and then you get something like an ocean trench. All right, so then there's this formative assessment on the handout that's in your folder. So they're gonna circle a convergent plate boundary divergent boundary and transform boundary representation with arrows. Then they're gonna explain how mountains are formed. So of course there's convergent boundaries and they're gonna explain how faults are formed. And I, I highly recommend this activity because it is so hands-on. Even if you can't eat the materials, it's fun, it smells great. Um, and there are different kinds of icing that you can buy as needed, different kinds of graham crackers that you can buy as needed. And you could even use other materials, um, laminated index cards, um, with the icing if you needed to. So do what's best for your class. But this is a really fun, engaging lesson um, activity that I got from JLab. And I highly, highly recommend JSAP5 to anyone out there listening because this is one of many, many ideas and materials um, that you receive through this incredible program. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.